automatically. Look at that. Woo! All right. New Jersey, Clarksville, Albuquerque, New Kansas, Dothan, San Diego. Holy smokes. There are, I appreciate you all. Boston, Tucson, New York City. Ooh, I was in Manhattan not long ago. It's beautiful. Uh, we've got a, I don't know where that's from, but oh, maybe that's Texas. That must be Texas. A, a Fed. Is that Texas? Tell me that's Texas. Virginia Beach. Welcome back, Brent. Oh, Brent. Brent was here last week. He knows. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Though. Oh, Houston. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. All right. We'll give it another second here. Oh, Carl Carl Carlton. Of all people, you're the only one who typed it in the Q&A instead of the chat. Uh, I would flunk you, but I love you. So, um, no, I'm joking. Joking. Um, all right, cool. So we've got we've got some good. We got sixty people on so far. I'm excited. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time. All right. So I'm not gonna waste y'all's time. We're gonna dig in. We're gonna have a good time. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, my hope with this really is just that you learn something. Um, and then maybe you take this and go make money because uh. It's been some been some cool stuff for me over the years. Uh, that being said, let me pull up my PowerPoint real quick. Yes, I know PowerPoint service members can't get away from the damn things. Uh, okay, so just as a preface, I'm going to throw this out there. Um, two things. One, at the end of this call, and I don't know how I'm going to do this fair because last time I had someone else pull it in. Uh, if you make it all the way to the end. I'm going to give away a thousand bucks to somebody on the call. So I'll just Venmo you a thousand bucks. I don't know if anyone saw it. I didn't, I don't think I put that in any of the uh, information for this call, uh, like any of the emails or anything like last week, I think Brent was on the call last week. I did it and I had told people I was going to do it um, this week. I didn't tell anyone I was going to do it because I wanted people who actually cared to show up. So ta-da. Um, and last week I literally Venmoed somebody. I mean, Hang on, let me see. I don't know if you guys will be able to, just so that I don't seem like some guru scammy, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that through the, is it going to focus? Focus? Whatever. It says, thanks for being on the webinar. And it's me throwing a thousand bucks. Um, yeah, you can totally view the video after. The recording will be sent out. Um, that being said, uh, I am going to pick from the people who are still on at the end. So, sorry. Um, no, it doesn't have to be Venmo. We can figure it out. Uh, just don't make me download something I don't have. Like, I can send you a check before you make me download some new processor. So Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, friends, whatever whatever we got to do. Um, you know, back rubs. Uh, actually, I probably shouldn't make that joke. Somebody's going to be offended. Sorry, I offered services. All right. Anyway, I feel this is a military group. It's safe. So the <laughs> bearable. Sure. You want, you want gold bars? Great. Um, so, okay. We're going to get... All kinds of sidetracked here. Um, let me see if there is a way. There should be a way. I was hoping there was a way. I was going to take like a cool picture with all the people on here because I've never had this many people sign up for a webinar before. Um, <laughs> shoulders. Deal. You win, Jeremy. It's on. Uh, sorry. Um, I, I don't know how to do that. So I guess afterwards, maybe I'll be able to let everybody. Anyway, point being, I'm going to share my screen real quick. And the only thing I was going to say before I said that was... Um, once I share my screen, the way these webinars work with Zoom, I won't be able to read comments unless I like stop and like minimize stuff and pull the comment string down. So feel free to drop comments and questions as we go. If they come up, uh, I will just not stop to answer them until the end because, well, that we would never get through this. So and uh, I'm sure you guys like to make it through things that you start. So. All right. Can I just get, oh, you know what would help is if I shared bef the screen before, you'd think this was my first rodeo. All right, we're going to share screen two, and then I'm going to hit, you need to see this cool picture of me with Machu Picchu way in the background. We had one more day of hiking to go. And all right, can I get, well, actually, so that the comments in chat don't blow up, just Scream at me in the chat if you can't see that. And if you can, just leave it alone. Um, so if I don't see a billion notifications, I'm going to assume everything worked. And this is going to be a good time. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What is house hacking? Basically, we're going to, I mean, you can read it, right? I'm not going to beat the dead horse here. We're going to talk about a bunch of house hacking stuff. This is, um, I would say this is about 
two thirds of the slides for a course that I'm actually in the middle of building out on this. So um, I didn't want to give you guys 40 slides of crap and have you on here for like two hours. So we're going to do, I think it's like 18 slides, maybe 19. And it is all the meat and potatoes. And then at the end, um, you know, I'm and but for, for the record, I am not sitting here to pitch you some, I'm not going to sell this course. So uh, it's, it's going to be something I put for free in the mastermind group. So um, not like you're not getting some guru. I held the secret sauce, whatever. I'm going to answer all your questions afterwards. So here we go. What is house hacking? If you guys aren't familiar with the strategy, this is my absolute favorite way to get started in real estate investing. House hacking is nothing other than effectively making tenants pay your mortgage for you. And honestly, you can do this even on a rental, which we'll talk about, but the most popular way to do this is people buy like a fourplex and they rent three units. They live in one or they'll buy like a single family house with five bedrooms and they will rent four bedrooms and live in one or three bedrooms, live in one, use an office, whatever. Um, we'll dig more into the strategies, but essentially house hacking is my favorite thing. It's how I bought my first house. I'm in my third one right now. And um uh, and I plan my next one is going to be the same thing. I'm going to use this as part of the business model for my next, the house I plan to build next year. Um, but it's essentially purchasing a property with the intent to rent rooms or units to cover all or at least a large chunk of your mortgage and reduce your living expenses. For reference, 2015, I bought a duplex, my very first property. I used an FHA loan, 3.5% down. The property was $79,900. So do the math. It was like three grand down, put a thousand into flooring. Um, and I think we're going to dig into those details here in a second. So I won't, I'll just skim this. Um, yeah. House hack, duplex, very first thing, my first purchase. Uh, then 16 to 19, I was in base housing because I couldn't afford anything in Hawaii. And the VA loan still had a limit on your first use, which it does not anymore. 2019 to 2021, I house hacked a four bed, three bath house at one point. Uh, well, we'll dig into that in a second. Uh, 21 to 23, which is actually 24 now. Oh, I can tell when I started building this, um, this house, which I will explain in a second. And then in the future, I plan to do this. I want to build by like 20 acres and build a barn dominium in like one quarter and a triplex in the other and like fence it so that they never have to see the rest of the property. And then I'll use those three tenants to essentially pay, probably won't be all, but like maybe half of my mortgage to own 20 acres and a big barn dominium. That's kind of my long-term next plan. And then my my actual plan with that is to build that with like a local conventional, you know, my portfolio lender and then refinance it into a VA loan because I don't know anyone who will build a fourplex, let alone two separate structures with the VA loan. But I know plenty of people who will allow you to use a VA loan to purchase four units in two buildings as long as they're on the same parcel. And that's the plan. I'm going to build that and then I'm going to refi into it and do 100% cash out. So my experience, there's the first duplex. Bought it for $79,900 in 2015, sold it for $165,000 in 2023. Um, it, at the time I was living in, or as, yeah, I was living in a two bed, one bath apartment that was costing me $550 a month. When I moved into this, my all in expenses were $585 a month for principal interest taxes insurance. Obviously, there was utilities with that, um, but I had utilities with the apartment too. So, kind of a wash. And uh, when I first moved in, I had a tenant paying $475. So, I was really out like $110 a month to live in that thing, vice $550 a month to live in. The other apartment. And then by the time I sold it, it was renting for $1,300 a month and it had cash flowed on average two to $300 a month since I moved out of it mid 2016 when I got orders to Hawaii. Uh, so it cash flowed like we'll call it 200 bucks on the low end for five years. Um, so, you know, you do the math 10, 15 grand, uh, you know, as it fluctuates in cash flow. I didn't put much rent, much updating into that place at all. Uh, I think over the course of time, I might've had two grand, 2,500 bucks in uh, like kind of turnover maintenance where I had to update some stuff in the kitchen. But other than that, nothing crazy. And then I sold it for double, right? So more than double, uh, which is awesome. Then in 2019, I was moving to California. At the time, the VA loan still didn't have a limit or still had a limit. Uh, six months later, that changed. And I wish I'd known that was coming, uh, but it still had a limit. And so I would have been, I wouldn't have been able to buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex in San Diego. And I really didn't want to own a single family house there because I was only going to be there for like 18 months, maybe two years, which ended up being two years uh, until my EAS. And I just, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't know what the market was going to look like. And I was like, man, we're way higher than we were for an average price point in 2008. I just don't want to risk getting caught with my pants down in a house in California. When I'm moving back to Missouri, I know for a fact in two years, boy, was I wrong because COVID hit that property went up $200,000 in value. And I should have just, anyway, hindsight. Right. So, but what I did was I, I contacted a couple different landlords and I was like, yo, um, I will sign a two-year lease today if you allow me to sublet bedrooms on Airbnb while my family is out of town. And they were like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I just didn't mention that my family was actually going to live out of town and be in town maybe, you know, 90 days a year. And so um, I Airbnb'd two bedrooms. And at one point, my buddy John, uh, who is an incredible sales guy, wholesaler, big time real estate investor with me now, we own a bunch of stuff together. Um, but at the time, he was just a recon guy getting out of the Marine Corps. And he was a roommate in one of the four bedrooms. And then I Airbnb'd one. And then when he moved back out, I started Airbnb in that room again. And as you can see here, uh, my average revenue was like 2,400 a month. But if you take the entire square footage of the house and you take 60% of that, because that was the like common area use, so, you know, garage, kitchen, living room, loft, laundry room, like all the common area stuff, for the Airbnb, I was able to write that off, which was about $630 a month saved after, you know, 30% tax rate. Cause my, my rent was 3000. So 60% of that, it's like 2,100 bucks. Anyway, do all the math. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Plus, oh yeah, 3000 plus the 30, so 3,500 cause it was utilities, internet, trash, whatever. Um, basically once you factor in the uh, tax savings there, I was pretty close to break even on a house that I never even owned, which is pretty cool. Then my most recent one is this, which is 4,800 square foot. Upstairs is 3,200 square foot, uh, three or four, four, two and a half. Downstairs is a 1,600 square foot, two, one that I used in my office. And then recently with the divorce, I moved in here. Uh, actually, I have a, I have a, it's like a wood shop that was in the backyard. It's like a tiny home, like one of those Home Depot like sheds. It's 250 square feet. And I dropped uh, six grand into converting that into a studio apartment for myself. And then it's 50 yards from this, which is my office. And the upstairs, uh, you can see I actually broke down all of my stuff over there. So when I had a 30-year fixed debt, it was $900 a month cheaper. Uh, per month to live here, which made this thing cash flow. I was cash flowing like a thousand bucks, twelve hundred bucks a month to own this. And then during the divorce, I had to refi, and so I'm now on a 25 year investor loan at eight percent interest rather than the conventional loan at three and a quarter. So that's kind of painful, um, but uh, nonetheless. So you know, I've got all the math there on what I've been paying and blah blah blah, and how I got all my money back out. And um, bottom line is. Last year, I did $41,009.67 in Airbnb and VRBO, like rental income from the short-term rental side upstairs. And then my total uh, short like expenses, principal and interest, taxes and insurance, the 5% sales tax from the city or state, and then uh, internet, utilities, you know, whatever is $40,690. So I made all of $319.19 to own this house, but I also got to live in it since July for free. So pretty sweet. It's my office. My assistant works here. My community manager's here half the time. Um, can't complain. Uh, it's also, I, as you see, I bought it for 365 and appraised for 425 already. It's probably worth 450 right now. So, um, and with a $2,600 a month payment, I'm paying down a decent amount of expenses. Now, Here's some advantages with the VA loan. Now, I will preface this with, I've actually not ever been able to use the VA loan yet. So the first one, I was told you can only use it once, which was wrong. So I used an FHA. Then I was priced out of Hawaii, made the decision not to buy in San Diego. And then when I moved into this one, I tried to use the VA loan. God, I tried. Uh, but I was, because I left the Marine Corps, I had no income. And because I'm a real estate investor and I write everything out on taxes, I'm what we call unbankable. So even though my lender will give me all kinds of loans for apartments and hotels and, and whatever, getting a VA loan means I actually have to qualify through the primary residence, like traditional stuff. If you've ever done a primary residence mortgage, it's way more intense than a commercial mortgage, which is funny. So I'm like, you guys will give me you know, millions of dollars for investment properties, but 
I can't buy my own house. So I had to start paying myself a salary last year. And so this year will be the first year I'm finally qualified and I'm going to use the VA loan. So um, it is without a doubt the absolute best primary residence mortgage in existence. And we're going to talk about it for a second. I'll let you guys kind of peruse that slide while I attempt to keep myself from losing my voice. So we mentioned the zero down. Now, there are usually one to three percent that you should budget for closing costs. That being said, as it says right there, up to four percent of that can be a seller credit at closing. So you can get your seller to essentially credit you the money to pay your closing costs and fees. And so you can be zero out of pocket to close with the VA loan. Now, that's not a guarantee and they're under no obligation to do it. But currently, it's not a hot seller's market. Houses are sitting for a while. And so a lot of people are getting this done. Like in 2020, 2021, when people were buying houses like 100K over ask, probably weren't going to get someone to concede 4%. But the trick there, I guess, would be you offer 4% more and ask for that credit. Or you offer 5% more and ask for that credit and finance it into the loan. So that'd be one way you could kind of finagle to get it in the system. Um, that being said... 75% of your rental income will count towards your debt to income ratio. So if you're renting a fourplex or buying a fourplex and each room is unit is rented for a thousand bucks, 75%, which math in public 15, 20, 22, 20, 22, 250 or 2250 um, of that 3000 in rental income will count towards your debt to income ratio, which means if you make $5,000 a month, you're almost doubling what you qualify for with a mortgage because of that rental income, or not doubling, sorry, 50% uh, increase. It's like a 40% increase, um, math in public, right? So it's one of the reasons you can actually qualify for a lot higher mortgage, usually with a duplex, triplex, fourplex than other uh, mortgages. Now, if you have a lender who tells you no with this, that's a lender overlay, not the VA guidelines. So find a different lender. Happy to introduce you to one if you want. I've got plenty across the country that'll do it. I know this is a fact because I've seen it done. I've helped. I might not have used it yet, but I've helped vets buy over $150 million worth of homes through introductions. So yeah, um, nice. I've had plenty of conversations with lenders and I happen to be licensed as one. So uh, there's no PMI. There's no, it's actually MIP or PMI. So there's no mortgage insurance premiums or private mortgage insurance, which are on any time you use a primary residence loan and you pay less than 20% down. So a conventional 5% down, an FHA loan, 3.5% down, or you use a conventional loan and you only pay 15% down, you're going to pay MIP and PMI until you are 80% loan to value of your original purchase price. Um, meaning until you pay it down to what would have been 20%, then you can ask to get that removed. Here's the thing. That sucks. Um, so it's really cool that you're not paying it. Perspective, uh, that $79,900 duplex that I showed you, I was paying $81 a month in PMI because I used an FHA loan. The VA works out to, I think it's like, it used to be $10.98 for every $100,000 you borrow. But because they dropped it from 2.3% to 2.15% for the funding fee, um, it's actually like $10.98. 40 cents. I don't know. I'd have to actually, I'll do the math right now live for you guys, right? Because I see it right there. So 20, 21.50. So ooh. oh, sorry. <laughs> this math's going to be wrong because that's 21.50 over the course of 30 years. Um, so assuming there's no interest attached to it. There you go. $5.98. Um, even if it's 10 times that it's cheaper than PMI. So funding fee is really not that bad. I know people scream about it. They hate it. They la 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 la. Don't worry about it. If you're assuming a 4% interest rate, it's probably about $11 added to your mortgage payment. And I'd rather pay that all day than having to put $20,000 down on a mortgage. In fact, I did this the other day and it would take you like 180 years for that $11 a month to equal 20 K. So just put the $20,000 into cash reserves so that if something breaks on the house, you have money to fix it. That's a way smarter bet, in my opinion. Um, or you got it as an emergency fund, or you even throw it in an index fund. And the interest you'd earned in that index fund, and you can still use it as cash reserves, will more than pay anything that funding fee 
would cost you. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. I'm, I see the chat's kind of blowing up. So uh, we might come back to this slide. Um, because I clicked on the screen, I can no longer... Oh, did I just double? Okay. All right. Why house hacking? Here's here's really my favorite reasons, right? So it's a primary residence mortgage. It's a 30-year amortized mortgage. It is the cheapest debt you're going to get. The VA loan is cheaper than everything else, especially because on two, three, and four unit properties, FHA conventional adds an automatic 0.5 or, or half a point, i.e., you could get a three and a half percent with the VA loan, and it would be a four because it's multifamily with FHA and conventional. Um, so it's cheaper, again, than all fronts on the VA loan. Um, and we we're not going to dig too deep into all that because, well, really, because I just did a forty minute podcast or thirty five minute podcast only about the VA loan, and that'll come out in like two weeks. So go listen to that. I go through everything. Um, all right, so. You're going to get cash flow, depreciation, debt pay down, appreciation, meaning the property going up in value, all of these things while simultaneously learning how to be a landlord. I think that's huge because why would you not want to learn to be a landlord in a place that's saving you money to live in? Also, a lot of people get scared when they start talking about buying an investment property. Let's be real. It can be scary. There's a ton of people who get stuck in analysis paralysis, and I get it. It's a lot easier to say, I'm buying a house. Um, Richard, I see you wave, raised your hand. I'll, I'll get to you at the end, buddy. I, I can't, I mean, I'd love to stop and take every question. I've got like 22 comments, but, um, we're going to have to, we're going to have to move through and, and get to the end. Um, so if I go in, I'm a newbie investor and I tell all my friends that I want to buy an investment property, I'm going to hear a lot of like scary stories. But if I go and I tell all my friends that I'm buying a house, I'm going to get a lot of support. So mentally, it's a lot easier to jump into a house hack where you're buying a house that you know everybody else is uh, supporting you on and it's normal to buy a house. That's the American dream as opposed to an investment. And you're doing exactly that. You're investing, but you're, you know, you're getting it via primary residence mortgage, which is awesome. Um, all right. Let me, I'm just going to make sure there's nothing crazy like I'm not. Okay. No, I just make sure I keep seeing comments. I was like, let me just make sure that like my audio is on. <laughs> all of a sudden it died and everybody's trying to tell me they can't hear me. So, all right, cool. We're good. I'm going to keep rolling. Um, also, you increase your savings gap, which is the single fastest way to achieve financial freedom is to save more of the money you're making. Here's the beautiful thing. Um, saving money is infinitely more powerful than making more money. Now, okay, let me, let me caveat that. You can only save so much money, you can make a lot more. So there's that. There's that aspect. It is easier to make more money than it is sometimes to cut. But what I meant by that is if you make an extra thousand dollars, it's taxed at 30%, 20%, whatever. We'll say 30. So really, you only made an extra seven hundred dollars. But if you had already been taxed on a thousand dollars that you were paying in rent, and then you save that thousand dollars by not paying rent anymore because you house hacked. That's $1,000 in your pocket because it was already taxed. That is post-tax money. So I would rather save post-tax money than make the same amount in pre-tax dollars. Hope that makes sense. Of course, I clicked off the screen. Come on. There we go. All right. So there are some downsides, right? I'm not going to, I'm not this like guru, everything's amazing, blah, 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 whatever. Um, this picture is also circa Bigger Pockets Conference this year. So <laughs> downside number one, you're living next to tenants. Sorry. So this is not always ideal for like big families. Now I will tell you, you can buy a fourplex with three bedrooms and two baths in it, or even a four, three. I've seen some pretty gnarly duplexes and fourplexes. So it's possible. It just depends on what you're okay with. You know, like I get it. If you have a wife and two kids, it's probably not the most amazing, luxurious, wonderful. I'm going to Instagram it thing to buy a fourplex. But what's more important? You're, like comfort for the next two years or your ability to have financial freedom, do whatever the fuck you want in 10 years. It's up to you, right? You got to make that decision. I get it. Not always the easiest thing, but then again, we're all service members. So uh, you're kind of used to uncomfortable shit. So, all right. Now your tenants might know who that you own the home. That unfortunately would be a pain in the ass. I made that mistake on my first property and my tenants would like ignore my property manager, come over to me and be like, oh, the property manager. Like I'd be like, hey, Jerry, my property manager, can you get the tenants to take all this crap down that they put up in the yard that doesn't need to be there? Like they had like tarp, like custom tarp 
like a blue tarp awning that they built over their porch to like smoke in and to stay dry in the rain. And I was like, this looks terrible. It looks like a junkyard. And so I'm like, Hey Jerry, can you, can you ask them to pull that down? And she'd be like, Hey, you guys can't have that up. You need to take it down. And then they would walk over to me and be like, Oh, the property manager is so mean. Can we just make an exception? And I'm a softy. So I'd be like, yeah, fine. And then <laughs> it was this whole thing. So when they moved out, I told Jerry, I was like, never again will a tenant know who I am. <laughs> like this is you, your whole existence should be running roadblock. And so they'd come over and be like, the property manager is so mean. I'd be like, oh, she's the worst. That owner's an asshole. Um, so I would recommend that you try to do that. Don't, <laughs> don't play the game. Now, if you're managing the property yourself, you know, it is what it is. I don't have that personality. Um, oh, and I should mention on the VA loan side, uh, total distraction, total caveat, but this is worth mentioning. There are lenders who will tell you that the 75% gross monthly uh, rent does not count if you are the landlord and it is your first time managing the property. That's fine. That might be a lender overlay. That is not a VA guideline. What the VA guideline says is that you as a landlord must have a, or you as a owner must have a reasonable expectancy to succeed as a landlord. I could argue that all of us would be able to argue that as a service member who has dealt with E1, Z2, Z3s or been an E1, E2, E3, um, that we are probably qualified to deal with a tenant. That being said, the workaround on this is literally to just go, okay, fine. I'll hire a property manager. They have the experience. Do the loan. Okay. Now, back to this. Location might not be perfect. Let's be real. You're probably not going to live in a fourplex in like a luxurious gated community. Um, they might exist. They might be out there. Um, but this that would work. Single family house. My, my buddy Rio, I'll show you his property in a second. Um, five bed, four bath, I think, house in San Diego, like Oceanside, like right out the back gate, Camp Pendleton, literally on Players Lane. Um, actually, that's Players? Anyway, in a really, really, really nice neighborhood. And really incredibly nice house and he house act four bedrooms to lieutenants. So um, most likely still not, it's probably not going to be your dream house. It is possible, but it's most likely not going to be, but that's fine because this is how you build wealth. Not how you like, I wish I could tell you, you buy one house and you're financially free for the rest of your life. Um, that's usually not how this works. And uh, the, it can be hard to let passive income be passive, meaning what I was just talking about, like, nitpicking things with the tenants when I really didn't need to be there. Everybody say, hi, Doug. Um, this is my good friend, Doug Spence. He is a member of the war room and his wife. They are both in the Navy officers. Uh, he is a navigator and she, I believe she's a Jag. Um, that's really irrelevant other than they're in the picture. And so they bought a duplex. Well, a single family with a, basement ADU additional dwelling unit in San Diego County purchase. Price. And so for the record, all of these examples I got here are because I made a post in the big Facebook group saying, Hey, I want to hear your house hack success stories, like drop them in the comments or drop them in the chat. And, uh, I got like 50 or 60 comments. And so I handpicked a few of these examples. Some are friends, some are people I've never even talked to. And I pulled their information and was like, dude, I really love that story. We're going to use that one. So I have consent. Um, so we bought it for $965,000 monthly income from the tenant is 2150. So that's not, I mean, his, his principal interest taxes and insurance is $4,850. So he's out of pocket 2,600 bucks a month, but, oh, and then the $600 in utilities and stuff, but he would be, he would be paying that to live in that single family house in that area anyway. Right. So two and a quarter percent interest rate with the VA loan purchased in 2021, done some renovations, increased the value. That house is probably worth 1.2 maybe 1.3 now. So the equity there is huge at $4,850 on a two and a quarter. He's paying at least 25, well, at least 2000, but probably 2,500, 2,600 bucks down on his principal every single month. So basically the money his tenant gives him is essentially going in his pocket. And the money that he's paying on top of that is going into equity in the home. Cool. And then he would be paying I think his BAH is like 3,200. I might be wrong on San Diego BAH right now, but it's over three grand. And so he's essentially out of pocket zero on his BAH because he's got the tenant income to offset while he's building equity, while he's paying down his principal. And he'd be paying at least 3,000, if not more, to live in a house similar, even as a tenant. So a win. 
All right. Rio Gallegos. Love this guy. Uh, War Room member as well. And they're not all going to be that on the examples, I promise. Um, I might be a little biased just because I know these guys all personally. Type of property. This is the single family five bedroom house. He purchased it for $721,000. It is rented for all of that. You can see the breakdown there. Now, I will say the master that's $1,800, that's after he moved out. So if we take that $1,800 out, we're at, uh, again, with the math in public, $6,300. No, sorry, $5,300. Um, at $5,300, he still was cash flowing while he lived in the property. So it was $4,137. He had a $1,200 spread there. Now, I wouldn't say he was pocketing that because he was doing a ton of updates to the house. While we were there, this guy put in, like, knocked a wall out, put, like, an in-the-wall bar, put in a pool table. I mean, this was, like, a bunch of single lieutenants and and captain, and then he got married. Um, just living it up in this house. But when he moved out, that thing is cash flowing him two grand, 2500 bucks, depending on, you know, expenses. I mean, it's, it's bringing in three grand right there, but you got to figure some expenses in. Um, you know, there's the other expenses right there, 1521, right? I missed that. So, all right. So it's still, it is still cash flowing with him not living in the property. And by the way, oh, what he thinks this thing's worth 1.1 and 1.2 now. So that's 400,000, $500,000 in equity, not including whatever he's paid down, which again, at the, we'll go back at the 4,100, he's paying a lot down every month, at least two grand on his mortgage. Total monthly expenses. So this is what they break down to. The furniture, solar panels, gardener housemaid, right? He had a nice place and they were all lieutenants. So they were busy. Um, they're infantry and arty guys for the most part. Trash, utilities, HOA, internet, right? It's all there. Like that's, we're not, we're being honest about these numbers. Modeled the house, target single staff, officer, military, managing it from Okinawa since 21, had one vacant room for about two weeks and he owes 660. So if we do the math back, he has paid down, $61,000 on it since he bought it. And it's probably worth 1.1 to 1.2. So yeah, he's got five to $600,000 in equity in that thing. And it's paying him to own it. Pretty sweet. Cesar Bustamante. He and I have talked, never met, not in the war room. Just wanted to show you guys that I'm not just using those people. Um, and I actually have more examples that I'm going to show you tonight, but I figured those were a couple of the slides that didn't need to be in here to drag this out. Um, triplex, $950,000. Total income from tenants, $7,600. bucks. monthly payment, $5,340. So cash flow there. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, right? Again, be living in it for free. Um, $1.1 million current value. So gone up, you know, 150 k Now, he purchased this on a corner lot in Miami. Gained experience in house hacking, living for free. Recently turned one of the units into his first short-term rental. Zoned for up to nine. So he's hoping to be able to build another unit this year and then add later and refinance once rates go down. So this one was actually purchased. So that monthly 7,600 bucks, this was purchased current high rates, right? So this still works and that's not like, or sorry, 5,300 is the pity. Um, so just to show you, like this still works even with higher interest rates. You just got to buy right. All right. Martin Tyler, Marty, this is, I probably have other photos. I couldn't find a better photo of him. This is from when we went to Tampa for the war room event last year. And this is one of my favorite photos of Marty because, well, really, because I took that picture, fresh haircut, sitting there right when we arrived. And him, me, and on the other side is my good friend, Adam Whitney, are sitting on a rooftop at a pool um, in Tampa the day before the event, just kind of planning last minute details, talking things out. Marty obviously is exhausted. And I posted this on Instagram. I was like, we're working hard today. So anyway, I wish he was on this call so I could make fun of him. I love that dude. Hey, Marty and I are actually under contract on 14 single families in a vacant lot right now. And I bought a duplex with him uh, three weeks ago. So great dude, which is why I talk shit. So if you get really close to me, that's how you know we're good. I talk smack. Um, all right. Single family house with an ADU above their detached garage. So I was actually there like three weeks ago um, watching some football or some basketball while my kid was playing with his kid. And uh, basically they built a garage with a small unit on top of it. And they lived in that while they were building the house and then finished the house, moved in, rent the garage. So purchase price was 220. The income from tenants is 500 bucks. This is in Missouri and he's in a smaller town. So not a ton of income per se. 
but his monthly payment's 1100 bucks. And I assure you, this guy's in a big house. It's a five bedroom house that he's paying 600 bucks a month to live in. He used a construction loan, a VA construction loan, built the garage with the apartment, lived in, built the house, refinanced with interest rates were super low. And now he's at 1100 bucks paying 600 out of pocket to own a five bedroom house that he's going to be in for a long time. And they paid 220. I don't want to speculate too much. I would imagine his place is worth 350, but you know, might be wrong. I don't know that specific. He's about 40 minutes from me. So I don't know that specific town super, super, super well, but case in point, right? Alex Schlow, another good friend and another member of the mastermind. And he bought a house, single family recently. Uh, actually, I don't think it was super recent. Sometimes not too far back, but $415,000. They Airbnb anywhere from $1,800 to $3,500 a month. He's in Colorado, so it's very seasonal. You know, obviously ski season is busier than not, but monthly principal is $2,174. So if you average that out, the $3,500 to $1,800, he's covered, right? And then total of other expenses, $300. So purchased single family primary residence. Spent $20,000 to dig a walkout entrance into their basement. So he did put some money into this. He's a Air Force physician. I guess I should have mentioned all these guys are. Um, anyway, these are all vets. They're all members of the Facebook group. And uh, so they converted the basement to a 1-1 Airbnb, rent it short term. And uh, he purchased it actually with a zero down physician's loan. So he still has full VA loan entitlement. So the next time he PCSs, uh, he will be using the VA loan to do the exact same. So he's an Air Force physician, which is why he was able to use that product. And... Um, yeah, living for free. So here is as much as this slide looks like a joke. This is, if you break it down, Barney, this is the way this stuff works, right? You house hack, you move, you house hack, you move, you house hack. And now what you've done, maybe I should put some numbers down here, but I wanted to keep the slide simple. Say that first house hack, you live for free and you save, we'll call it a thousand bucks a month on what would have been your housing expenses. Cool. Then when you move out, let's say that's only cash flowing 500 bucks a month now because, you know, you moved out. So there are some additional expenses, but you got a tenant. So whatever. So let's say it's 500 bucks a month. Move into the next one. You're making a thousand. Now you're at 1500 bucks a month that you would have spent a thousand of on housing and you just save it. So the first house you live there for, call it two years. You saved 24, 24,000 bucks or yeah, 24,000 bucks that would have gone to rent the second house. You move in, now you're at $1,500 a year for two years. So math in public, you're at $36,000 coming in over that. So now you're at $60,000 you've saved in four years, right? And this is all while not having housing expenses, while living somewhere, whatever. And this is assuming you do nothing else for investing. You move into that third one, we'll call it you make $2,000 a month off those first two. So now you're at $48,000 plus. So you're at $108,000 saved in six years, which you are now investing. So the whole time you can be investing in other properties to boost your cash flow. You can be saving other money. You can be, I mean, there's so many other things, but just from choosing where you live, you saved $108,000 in six years, which goes towards $500,000 worth of real estate, which in general means you're bringing in $500,000. Should be bringing in $5,000 a month in, or sorry, <clears throat> 500k yeah you should be bringing in five thousand dollars a month in rent probably at least another thousand bucks there in cash flow if you buy right so now you're you see how this compounds i don't want to like i'm spitballing here but it's good stuff all right so there's some unique opportunities for service members and this is one of the things that i'm going to try to expound upon for the actual course i didn't like really dig into like there's a lot more. Um, these are my two favorite. So the first is deployment hack, meaning let's say you buy a house, it's a fourplex, and you get orders to deploy. This is assuming you don't have a huge family. Um, you move out because you're deploying, put all your stuff in storage for like 30 bucks or just leave it in the garage and then move someone in as a tenant and you're cash flowing on that house while you're deployed. You come back. Oh no, the tenant's lease isn't up. And I've owned this house for way over a year. I want to buy another house hack. Ta-da. And even if you do have a big family and you want to do this, you totally can because you just have you your family can go back home. Now I'm not saying that's the easiest thing, but it can it can work, right? There's always a way to make something work if you want it bad enough. Um then I would say the two into fifteen. So 
if you live in a house for two cumulative years, so 24 months total in out of five years, when you sell that house, you get a section 121 exclusion, right? Which means let's say I lived in a house for one year. I moved out for a year. I lived in it again for one year. I'm total 24 months cumulative living in that house as my primary residence. I have within that five-year window to sell it and not pay any capital gains tax up to $250,000 single or a half a million dollars married. I can dodge that tax. Service members, that five-year exemption is 15 provided you bought the house while serving and you're still serving when you sell it. So if you buy a house five years into the military and you hit your 19-year mark and you want to sell it, you are capital gains free if you're married up to a half a million dollars. Proof in point. We just love being hanging, but being hanging, being left hanging. There we go. Anyway, the proof in point there would be my good friend, Dave, who, not me, um, bought a house in North Park in San Diego County in 2014, sold it for $517,000 in profit in 2021 or 2022, and only had to pay capital gains tax on the $17,000, even though they had not lived, they had owned the house for more than five years. Uh, I think at the time they sold it, it was eight years, seven or eight years, and they hadn't lived in it in four or five years. That's pretty sick. So we get a very unique exemption there with section 121. All right. Now I'm going to click over this slide. It's super bright. It's going to baffle some of you. I'm going to drop that same link in the chat here and we'll talk. And then while we're talking about this, I'm going to go back and answer questions. I'm going to let that slide sit for a second. I'm going to read through these questions. So essentially this slide is if you want access to that course for free, whenever I launch it, you know, you can hop on this call with my team and we can talk and see how we can help. But realistically, this is the slide for like, you saw some of those guys are war room members are all good friends. I'd love for you to talk to my team. No worries. No pressure. It is simple call strategy call. See if we can help you out and uh, get a whole lot more value and information like this. I, my goal this year is to make, to help 10,000 vets. Well, <laughs> maybe I should rewrote this. My goal is to help 10,000 vets achieve financial freedom. I don't know if that's going to happen this year. It's like my five to 10 year goal, but um, let's see where we're at for questions. All right. So I see how's refinancing. Mm -mm. Pay for all closing costs, additional 4% concession to the buyer point towards points, paying off veterans debt. Boom. Yes. Uh, Jewel, I see your request there for lender info. Yeah. Hang on one sec. Let me drop this. Um, there are various. So if you, that link right there, um, is if you click that link, it's a questionnaire. It'll ask you whether you want an introduction to an agent, a lender, or both. And it, is just kind of information so that when I make that introduction, I know what you're actually looking for instead of just being like, Jewel wants to talk about houses. Um, so I can make it an easier uh, piece of the puzzle there. Um, and so I, I just dropped that link. I have direct links for lenders and direct links for ages, but that one allows you to kind of pick whichever you want. So um, yeah, so Adam and Jewel, there's that info. Seller's credit on a house I just purchased two months ago. Um, all my EMD back as well. Beautiful. See, I'm what I'm freaking talking about, Henry. That's awesome. Congrats. Um, can I do one for a new build? Yeah. Um, so before I put my foot in my mouth, I will have to go and confirm, confirm, but I am 95% certain that new build based on projected income would be the exact same as long as it's long-term rentals. Unfortunately, uh, primary residence mortgages do not yet acknowledge Airbnb or VRBO, uh, which I saw a question down there. VRBO is vacation rental by owner. So it's the Airbnb competitor that's actually been around longer, but just in general, short-term rentals, vacation rentals, medium-term rentals, stuff like that. Uh, lenders do not, they don't accept that as income because it's you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, even if you've had that rental income the same for 10 years, I still view it as sketchy or iffy or variable. Um, but yes, you can use long-term in income. And I'd imagine that's the same for a build. Uh, no, that is no PMI for VA loans. Uh, if you use an FHA loan or a 5% conventional or anything under, under other than a VA loan that is not 
20% down, you will pay MIP and PMI. Um, so, uh, Eric, no, MIP is like what you pay at the beginning. Like it's, it's in your fees and closing costs. And then PMI is the ongoing piece. Um, MIP kind of varies on policy. It's like your it, initial, um, veteran lender, specializing VA loans. Cool. Thanks, Samantha. Appreciate you hanging out. Process is building our VA loan. Oh, building using the VA loan. Beautiful, man. I love that. Um, oh, I saw the... Okay, DD. I hope that answered your question. If not, let me know in the bottom now and I'll update. You can also call loan productions, VA loan, funding fee waived. Yes. Um, oh, that's cool. I wasn't aware of that. That's awesome. Loan production. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 5500 in debt to buy down at closing on credit card debt next month. Beautiful. Proof for FHA with 5% down on a duplex. Um, yes, you will be paying PMI on that because it is an FHA loan, DD. If you uh, if you were to swap that to VA, you wouldn't, but on the FHA, you will, yeah. Um, yes, Rebecca, Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as you have started the application for your disability pay, you can get your funding fee back if you get over 10 percent. If you if you apply for the loan and then, you know, whatever, but you have to have applied before you went under contract. So if you go under contract and then you apply, sorry, but if you apply, then you go under contract on a home and then you come back as 10% disability, you, the funding fees waived. I didn't even cover that. Um, the funding fee is waived for anyone 10% disabled or more. And if you are actively serving and have a purple heart, for some reason, if you have a purple heart and then you get out and you're not 10% disabled, it's not waived for you. But I don't know anyone who's purple heart and not 10%. Um, flip houses. Uh, I would say you should have an LLC for that, Henry, because you're, you're not even from an important standpoint, though there are some probably some legal reasons to do that. Uh, and I have a link if you want. Um, it's totally an affiliate link, which means if you use them for one LLC, I get nothing. But if you use them for follow on stuff, they'll pay me 20 or 30 percent. I don't remember of whatever you pay. So uh, just full disclosure, because I like to put that out there. I'm also using them right now. I've got four LLCs created by them, and I just scheduled an appointment to schedule to set up a trust with them uh it next week or on the 15th um so i believe in them prime corporate services they do all my stuff um and they'll do a free consultation and your first llc at cost so if you want that you know this isn't a sales pitch because ultimately i don't care where you get the llc but if you want to talk to them you know i'll drop you that link just shoot me a message and then um yeah i would recommend the llc because you're going to have expenses and you can write them off so that's just it's beneficial from a tax perspective uh Oh yeah, checks. Um, well, I mean, essentially, any money you have in savings counts as cash reserves. So when you're going to buy a property, if I'm not going to get into all the specifications for when you might need cash reserves because they change, but essentially, there are times where they're going to say, "Hey, we need some cash reserves on this property." Um, in that case, your thrift savings plan, any 401k, any IRA, any savings, any CD. All that stuff counts towards your reserves. So, and it can count multiple times. Like I had three different houses that I was like, yep, I've got a TSP. And they were like, cool, you've got reserves. So, um, j jumbo loan is just a phrase. Once you hit a certain dollar amount, you can do that in or out of an LLC. That doesn't really have anything to do with it, Carlos. Richard. I see your comment now and I absolutely forgive you, even though I have nothing to forgive, but I, I've hit many a wrong button on Zoom. So if you had a question, drop it in the chat and we'll chat. Um, yes, Jorge, I will send the video out. Uh, cash reserves. Oh, hey, look, Alexander answered. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, I love that people are answering this for me, so I should have just gone through real quick. Letitia, not legally, no. Um, and I could expound upon that, but the long story short is you have to intend to occupy the house as your primary residence for a year. And if you don't actually have that intention, then it's occupancy fraud. So even if you're like, oh yeah, I meant to, but I totally am going to have something come up. 
if you got caught in that, it would not be good. Um, so are there ways to get away with it? Absolutely. But I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I mean, you're talking a little bit of equity in a home for the threat of 10 grand and 10 years or five grand and 10 years in prison and a felony, not, not worth it. And people do get caught. So um, just not worth the risk in my opinion. Um, so I would just plan to live in the unit. Um, now, if something changes, like if you buy a house and then all of a sudden you get orders, totally different. Uh, if you had orders already and you buy a house and then you're like, Oh no, I got orders. That's fraud. So yeah, that's kind of the game. Um, so Louis, Louis, um, I mean, it would, it would technically have to be your primary residence. Uh, so you can't just buy a house for your son with the VA loan. Um, but there are other ways probably to do that. So I would talk to a lender and they could help you out with like how to, you know, work the equity on that or do that the right way. Um, comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, Boom. Austin Clark, man, you're two for two on these webinars. I fucking love you, man. Austin was one of my skill bridge interns, best intern I ever had. He's actually the only one who showed up in person, filmed some videos for me. It was good times. Um, yeah. So there you go. Boom. Crushed it. And by the way, Austin Tobin, the agent in DC, best real estate agent I've ever worked with. That dude's a fucking animal. Um, yes, Brett VA offers a construction loan and a renovation loan. Um, it's amazing. I'm telling you, it's the best primary residence mortgage you can do. Um, yes, Fritz, that's also true. Most lenders don't know diddly about the VA loan and won't mess with it, which is why you should talk to some of the vetted VA guys that I always recommend. Ryan, um, totally depends. Uh, I mean, not paying capital gains tax is great, but if you planned on holding it forever, you could just die. And I'm not saying like you should die, but I'm saying like, if you're going to hold it forever, like if it's a great property and a great rental and you don't have any intention of selling it, don't just sell it because of the 15-year exemption coming up. You can 1031 that money into another property and defer taxes, or you, if you pass away and it goes to probate or or, or passed to your children, um, they inherit it at what's called step-up cost basis, meaning they inherit it at current value without taxes. Um, so if you wanted to keep it all the way until it's being inherited – your kids wouldn't pay taxes on it. And if you use a 1031 exchange, you can roll that tax into another property and you can negate it. Uh, and same thing, you can just keep negating it until you pass away and pass it on to your kids. So I would say, yes, you can sell it before then. Like if you're planning to sell it and you're close to 15 years, absolutely. But yeah. Um. I'm going to drop this link once more, just in case you guys were wanting to click on it and it gets lost in here. Oh my gosh, it keeps going. Um, yes, tax exemptions. Everett, happy to answer whatever questions you got. If you drop them in here, I will be doing a full, like I've got probably 10 other slides and I'm going to be doing a much longer course on all of this over time. Um, but it's not going to be something that I ever sell. So you'll have to, you'll, you'll only be able to get it within the mastermind. Um, it'll be free to all those guys. Um, hell yeah, William. Great, 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 great. Uh, Ryan, I don't have the link for recording yet because I have yet to download this recording and upload it somewhere, but you will be getting it if you check your email uh, there will be two emails that go out after this, and the second one will have a link for exactly that. So I'm going to place it in there as soon as this is done. Um, oh, he wasn't even asking me about a list. Sorry. Active and deployments coming up. Hacking my house is not being able to address things. Yeah, I would absolutely. Dusty, just hire a property manager. I mean, you can manage it yourself. You don't have to hire a property manager, but I have always had a property manager, and I love them. Now, I will say you got to vet them properly, so check out my article I wrote on that where I actually give like a a list of like 20 questions you should use to interview property managers. Um, but yeah, um, I've had a property manager forever and I love it. Uh, appreciate it. Drop the link for that too. Um, okay. I think I dropped the link for the agents and lenders, um, but just in case that got lost in here, Drop that one too. I think we're almost done. Man, this is a lot of questions. Appreciate you guys. Uh, single family house. Hell yeah. 
getting ready to purchase our second home, rent out. Um, yeah. So Amanda, uh, I would I would check out if you want to shoot me a message after this, I'll drop you a link to that article. But honestly, if you just go to the website from militarymillionaire.com and you just type in property manager, there's a list of questions in there. Like it's an article about how to hire a property manager, and then it has a link to a list of like 20 questions that I the ones that I used when I interviewed probably four or five property managers and hired one. And she's been amazing. Um yeah, tiny homes are the best. Uh Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate you. Uh, subtract 420 from the unit size you're using. Oh, cool. Uh, boop, 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 boop. PCS into Hawaii. Price and intro. Ooh. Um, I, I don't think you need a 2-1. Um, and I mean, I could, there, that's a longer conversation than I think we need to have right now. Vanessa, I'd be happy to introduce you to a killer agent, uh, or I've got three in Hawaii that I love. Um, and lenders that would be more qualified to answer that. If you click on the link I've been dropping, um, I will say this, the VA Earl interest rate reduction refinance loan makes the two one buy down. I think useless because if you lock in a really good rate right now and rates go up, then you're glad you locked it in. And if rates do go down, you can use the VA Earl and you can reduce your rate without having to do a full refi and all that. So um, I have a video on that and an article. If you just Google uh, I R R R L, Earl, um, or if you want, I can drop you the link. And then let's see. Mm. I think there's a lot of ways you could go with that, Nathaniel. But I mean, I would, I would, are you working? I would say work with a, if you're not working with a good agent, you should be, um, depending, if you want to just hit me up offline, we'll chat and see if we can help point you in the right direction. There's nothing wrong with getting an apartment either though. Um, check out property manager card strategies for developing property. Uh, Ooh, Brett, that is a much more detailed investor question. Um, I'm, I'm not going to keep the people on here for that, but there are strategies. I haven't done a ton of development yet, but I've got friends who have, I can make an introduction and you can pick their brain. Um, I would say Nathaniel, and I hate to say this. Um, I would say your agent lender don't know what they're doing. Um, chances of closing with zero down are low. Uh, no, absolutely not. Best mortgage out there. If they don't understand how to use the VA loan, then they're not the people you want to be working with. And I'd be happy to introduce you to someone else um, because I hate to see that. Because usually when an agent or a lender is like, oh, nobody's going to let you buy zero down, it doesn't matter what percentage you put down to the seller. So that just tells me they don't understand the loan and they're not going to pitch it. Um, they're trying to pitch you something else that they do understand. And that drives me nuts. I hate to see that. So, um, all right. Yes, Liam, I've talked to three people on the podcast who have used the VA loan even in the barracks with command approval. If you look for the podcast with Jabbar, J-A-B-B-A-R, Adasada, A-D-E-S-A-D-A, -A -A, uh, on my podcast, he did it as a either Lance Corporal or a corporal living in the barracks, and uh, it's totally doable. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is doable. So go check out that podcast and you'll get some more info. Uh, Jeremiah Torres, uh, personal home to LLC. Man, I keep answering with, I have an article. I'm never going to catch up on these questions. Uh, I have an article on that. If you go to the website, just Google, do I need an LLC? Um, there's an article I wrote on when you do and when you don't and all of that. And, um, it'll dig into kind of those stipulations as well, as far as the do on sale clause. Earl is very super easy, very super quick. I love it. Um, <laughs> The ADU, that one was a basement unit that they converted. And then the one that was the Airbnb basement, they also converted. That being said, oh, thank you, Everett. Look at that. Beautiful. Do you need an LLC to start? Do you need to start an LLC? You look at me creating links that make sense. Um, now, that being said, Alexander, one of my best friends, Adit Shaw, is the king of building ADUs in like San Diego County. And I would be happy to introduce you if you got more questions on that. Uh Joshua, not uh, if you bought a primary residence with the VAA, but you're, it will not decrease your chances for approval on the next one. It just depends on your remaining entitlement. So that's more of a lender question, depending on your original purchase price and the purchase price on your next one. 
But if you move out and it's rented, then that income will negate your mortgage on that house and you it won't qual it won't hurt your ability to qualify other than as long as you're within that entitlement amount. Um yeah, Nathaniel, shoot me a message on Instagram or whatever. Um Oh, Everett, I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I've been bad about lead, reading uh, questions out loud. Basically, he was saying his, uh, just some stuff about his agent lender, just not really seeing, seem to know what they're, he, he can't find properties in his market and agent lender are saying 0% down wouldn't be accepted in this current market and uh, stuff like that. Um, just sounds like, and, and hey, maybe they are both retired Air Force officers. That doesn't mean they're pros with the loan unfortunately and they might be they there's a chance that they might know something i don't um i'd imagine we can get you into a house that way just depends i mean i can't i can't guarantee your ability to be approved for a loan but i can guarantee the ability of the loan to do its job if that makes sense assuming you qualify so uh if you are yeah jewel if you want to shoot me a uh, instagram is the best spot to hit me up so at from military to millionaire that's I actually check all my own DMs there. Um, you can shoot me a message on Facebook too. It just might I just don't check that as often because I have it to where I only see them on the desktop. Um, does going reserve impact VA loan qualifications? You have to either have served ninety days on orders during like active orders during a time of war, or one hundred and eighty one days on active orders during a time of peace, or finished a full six years in the reserves. Um. Oh, man, that's a big ass, Nathaniel. I'm not a huge fan of, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I much prefer to be able to just send a audio message, but here, I'll do, I'll do this. Um, that is the email and my assistant will answer that, put it in my inbox. I can't promise I'll get to you super, super, super quickly because I'm trying to not distract myself with the amount of emails I get. Um, oh, now I get the confusion, Joey. Yeah, I see it now. Nathaniel has been commenting to hosts and panelists. So I'm the only one who can see it. And I apologize that. Yeah, Jax, you're right. Um, okay. But yeah, Nathaniel, if you shoot that email, uh, my assistant will either, uh, <laughs> I fucking love vets. Everybody's busted everyone's balls. Um, you guys are the best. Uh, so my assistant will either set up a call or give me the question so I can answer them for you, um, or at least point you towards a resource that can help, <laughs> as you might have seen. Uh, I think there was one last one on here. Liam, where would you find my podcast? Watch this. Such a complicated link. Podcast. And one more time. There you go. Let's uh, let's get you in the tribe. It's badass. All right. Dude, Tim, that sucks. I need to do a better job pushing out my podcast, I guess. Um, Tracy, did I not answer your question? If I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. Let me go find it. Actually, there's so many comments here. Do you mind dropping it again? Okay, I'll answer it real quick. If you don't mind dropping it. And I'm going to stop the screen share. Oh, actually, holy crap. There's a Q&A section. I'm sorry. I see it, Tracy. <laughs> my bad. Um, all right, we got a couple more here. And then for those of you who are still here, we will give away some money. Um, although more expensive, can these next gen multi-generational homes that have an attached private entrance, kitchenette, living room, bedroom, and bathroom count as a duplex triplex? I'm I'm actually not sure what homes you're talking about, but I would say it's gonna come down to a zoning thing, really. But I mean, even if it's a single family house, you'd still be able to buy it. You just wouldn't be able to count their income towards your uh, purchase price. So like if it's a designing des dividing wall and it's separate units, yes. Um, Jeremiah, Legal Matters LLC article that was dropped is probably a good place to check. And then I would check with those asset protection um, guys. So honestly, if you go to my website slash PCS, like you're PCSing, like Prime Corporate Services, that'll take you to schedule that call if you want to talk to an asset protection guy. Um Rebecca, my definition of financial freedom, doing whatever the hell I want, when I want, where I want, how I want. Nobody can tell me what. So am I still working? Yeah. I love what I do. I don't have to. I could stop, stop and just be a bum, but that's, uh, I'm not wired that way. So, but I get to work 
around the country, around the world. I'm going to take a month off and go to Europe this year and I'll be working there if I want to or not. Last week I was in San Diego and I think I touched my laptop for 15 minutes. Um, so that's kind of my definition. Oh, you have land you want to develop in SoCal? Now I see it, Brett. Hey, if you've got land you want to develop in SoCal, um, I'm typing a name, Adit Shaw. Hit me up and have me give you an intro. He is the man. Um, good, 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 good friend of mine. And he specializes in developing properties in that area, like residential stuff. Active TUI monthly deployment. Yeah, absolutely. I think we already typed, talked about that one. Um, Dawson, if you've got uh, the email, the email. Um, yeah, sorry. Now I see what you were asking, Dawson. Uh, the email address that I dropped down there, shoot that a message. My assistant will send you our questionnaire. Um, let's see. I think I got through all these and then we'll go back to the chat one more time. I'm, I'm hanging out. So if you guys are asking questions, like I got another 10, 15 minutes, but I'd rather not keep you all here forever. Um, hell yeah, Ryan, let's do it. Yeah. Mother-in-law Casita. Um, you know, it's going to kind of depend on your lender and your appraiser. It's possible, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it. Um, getting out in three years, going to college, recommend you buy your second property now or wait till. Hmm. The problem is when you get out and you go to that place, you're probably not going to have income to qualify for that loan unless you already have a job because the GI bill doesn't count. So I'd say if you can buy a second house here, that makes sense and it'll cash flow when you move out, that's probably the best way to do it. And then you can do another later, but um yeah uh yeah i think i've got connections in new jersey and actually one of the probably the one of the biggest studs in the war room is a guy named bud who used to be the mayor of a town in new jersey and he runs like four companies and he used to coach with um what's his name Tarek, right Tarek almusa or whatever the the house flipper from HGTV. Um, so yeah. Chris Elder. What up, brother? Uh VA benefits more ones. Yep, 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 yep. I Henry, I think there's probably a couple different questions to be asked there. So if you want to shoot me a DM on Instagram, we'll have a little bit more of a conversation. But I think, honestly, if you've got the 20% down, if you still have cash reserves, then I would go for it. But if you don't have cash reserves, I'd wait till you at least have that built up. Um, Liam, I would say wait till you PCS. You know, save up money, invest a little bit in your TSP, right? Get the match. Um, I would say, yeah, I would say you... You benefit, um, you you save up as much as you can and spend some time educating. And then as soon as you PCS, you're gold. I didn't realize this screens were high enough that you guys could see them on the bottom there. Not professional. Okay. Yeah, there you go, Nathaniel. Tarek Amusa. Um, hell yeah, Rhiannon. You are the shit. Um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, T A R E K is the spelling. But anyway, um, oh, Rebecca, VA loan assumption. That's a long conversation. Check out my article on it. If you go to the website and you go to the, you go look for the VA loans or the VA loan assumption, I wrote a really detailed article that should answer 90% of your questions. And if they don't, I can introduce you to my friend Rob, who Mike Rob, who's done it a few times. Um, Hell yeah, Chris. That's it. Being able to travel while free, while not worrying. Okay, I'm going to shut this chat. And here's what we're going to do. Oh, did you just... Everett, you are the man. I appreciate you. Thanks for dropping links for people. I hire you for my web my webinars. All right. Um... Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to click on participants, attendees. I am, oh, I don't think if I share my screen, I don't think you guys will know that I'm literally just going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my freaking thingy in the middle of the, the people. Uh, let me see if I can share. If I share this screen, 
Yeah, we're going to share this screen. We're going to do this as fair as humanly possible. Um, at least I think so. I don't really know. This is what I think is going to be fair. So, okay. Can somebody drop me in the chat? Can you guys see what I'm what I'm scrolling around on over here? Oh, you can't see the participants list over here? Okay, hang on. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to where you guys can see me literally just scrolling a wheel so there's no like favoritism for whoever wins a thousand bucks. Um Let's try that once more. I'm going to pull the participants down. In theory, no, I dragged it over. It's on that screen. It's just that Zoom is smart enough that it does not want, it doesn't want you guys to be able to see the Zoom itself. I've got it in the middle of the, oh, that's frustrating. Oh, Fritz, 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 Fritz. You have been eliminated. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so nobody can see the list of participants, so you're just all going to have to trusty trust, and it is what it is. I have my mic, my mouse on the very lowest freaking person on the list. I'm going to scroll all the way up and down and 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 up and down, and I wish you guys could see what I was doing because I'm literally just scrolling around, and wherever this stops, Ellington Walters, which is good because I don't know you, so no one can say that I like – picked because of whatever so um ellington i will drop you i would say there you go look at him commenting oh he commented hosts and panelists but he did comment <laughs> adam you do win made up name you guys are so <laughs> fucking vets um all right let me get back to non-screen share here um okay so ellington do this do this for me i will drop first off i'm gonna drop this link once more for all of you motivators so we can make you all more money than a thousand bucks. And then uh, I'm going to drop that email again. Ellington, if you want to shoot me an email there, I will, we can coordinate how to pay. Or uh, if you want to shoot me a DM on Facebook or DM on Instagram, I don't care. Um, I'll get you your money. So congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you all hanging out with me. We've still got 62 people on the call and it has been an hour and 15 minutes, which is way longer than originally planned. I hope you got something out of this. If you're still on this and you want to like take a picture and share it on Instagram and tag or on Facebook, I would absolutely love that. And the last comment I saw there, I believe that was Leo. Uh, yes, it is. The recording will go out via email. There's two emails that will follow up in the next 24 hours maybe 30 hours. And one of those two that's scheduled has a link and I will be uploading this video to that link so that you guys can all get it. So, um, hope you got something out of this. I plan on doing more of these webinars and, uh, I think maybe the next one will be like how to buy your next house in 90 days. Uh, we've done some on creative financing. They haven't had as good a turnout as I thought. Maybe that's just because creative financing is scary, but I love that topic. I bought a lot of houses with some pretty crazy stuff meaning no money down or whatever. Um, yes, Grant, Every everybody will get the recording. My marketing for this was better. Oh, you mean all the emails? I didn't even write those. You should see. So I got some pretty crazy comments. People were like, wow, your emails were intense. And I was like, I actually dumbed down a little bit. Like I told the marketer, I was like, hey, if you're going to write me some emails, um, have fun, do whatever. And that dude, I mean, they were spicy. I was like, ooh. We can't say that. So it was it was intense. But I think that was Michael. We will get you to purchase a property in the next year. Yeah, let's do it. All right, everybody. I'm going to let you all go. Fritz, I'm glad you appreciated the emails. I'm going to work with that team again. This was their test, and I'm a fan. I loved what they were writing. Um, hell yeah, Leo. Pre-approval. That's a good start. Happy to have chat if you got questions. I should preface with not one-on-one, -on -one, pick my brain, 20-minute phone calls. I could never handle that with all of you. I'm sorry. I don't have that much time in my life, but happy to answer questions, default to resources. And if you want my, like, you know, an hour of my time every freaking uh, 
Yeah. Well, a one and two hour call with 80 people is a whole, a whole lot different. Um, but if you want direct access to me and the calls, like weekly calls where you can just sit there on a call for an hour with me and pick my brain and ask me whatever the hell you want, then I will drop that link one more time because that's what I do. Every Thursday from 7 to 8 Central, I sit on a call as well as two other calls a week with that group. And I just say, ask me anything. And that's what we do. So <laughs> I'm telling you, Everett, that, they were good, right? They were really, really catchy. I was like, have fun, guys. And they wrote that. And I was like, that's awesome. Um, anyway, you guys have a great day. Leo, uh, I actually have a rate tracker posted in the Facebook group. So you can search for it. Um, yes, Jewel, there's a link right there. What? Oh my gosh, my link just went to panelists now. I'm sorry. My stuff got switched away on me. Hopefully not all my stuff has been going to panelists. Now I'm confused. You got me all paranoid. I was about to log out. And now I'm like, have I just been dropping links to myself? Mm -mm -mm. No, okay. You guys are beautiful. Have a great day. Uh, Mike Robb, R-O-B-B. -B. He is in Ventura. You guys have a great evening.